Hello and welcome to our music studio in a shed. That's right, this is our jam shack. If you're looking for that good quality audio while keeping the projected sound at a low and altogether just paying a lot less, then go ahead and just watch the rest of this video and you'll see the magic happen. Be sure to keep in mind though, when I do say spending less, it is a relative statement in comparison to other professional builds or things of that nature. Because I'm going to tell you right now, ours is worth $1,700. And I know what you're thinking, dude, that's expensive. For sure it's going to cost you a pretty penny, but at least it's not going to be as much as other things that we have actually looked at, such as other buildings that are like pre-insulated and whatnot, or made out of different materials, and they can be like 2000 3000 or more. And then you have to get also all the soundproofing material anyway, which is going to stack up that price. This building can fit about four to five musicians, which is pretty good, considering the fact that it fits my drums in here as well. But let's say you're just trying to do your own little solo thing, so it's like a small recording space, it's definitely going to cost a lot less. Now one more thing, don't shy away from getting help. We definitely split up the payments within our own group and did over a certain amount of time to actually make this whole thing happen. But even if it's just you on your own or something, ask for as much help as you can because family might help you, friends might help you, whoever it may be. And considering the fact that some people have tools or whatnot that they can just lend you or even extra supplies that they have, like in our case, we have just little things here and there that we can improvise or use, everything seems to have worked out pretty well. But yes, just ask for help. All right, without further ado, let's get started. First things first, make sure you have a good flat surface to place your building on. And as you see right there, that's whole swing set. We actually had removed that and put some dirt on the floor to make it nice and even. Here we have our plywood that we got from Home Depot. As you're gonna see right here, we're actually measuring it out and marking it up because we're gonna be cutting it to fit the actual floor for our shed. If you wanted them to actually cut it for you, they can do it. It's like five or ten dollars, something like that. I forgot, but it was pretty cheap. But yeah, if you want them to do it, you can totally ask them and they'll get it done for you. Right here you can see we're using this long piece of wood. Just another improvised piece that we're going to be using. But what we did is we had marked points on one end of the board and then the other end of the board. And then we're just going to draw a full line using that board, kind of like a measuring stick or a ruler. But yeah, that's going to be our fine line of where we're going to be cutting. It's time to cut this board. So we have Ralphie on the other end holding this board down and keeping it secure while I'm cutting it. But yeah, make sure you have some safety glasses and some ear protection because you don't want to get any damage or pain while you're doing this. And of course, watch what you're doing. Be very careful. What you see right here, we actually hit a little bit of a snag. The wire was a little too short at that end. But yeah, just make sure you have enough space. Keep everything good. Here we have two flat bars that we bought at Home Depot and we're actually going to be marking this one up and cutting it with this saw that you see right here. Here you can see these little markings on the bars themselves. We actually measured this bar out into segments and those are going to be our indicators of where to cut. And you'll see how many pieces we get because of where we're going to place them on the wood in just a few moments. Here you see the flat bar pieces all laid out onto the boards. You see there's actually two per edge and we're going to just drill them into the wood. And what you also see in the intersections are mending plates. We're going to drill those down as well. Ralphie's right here holding the mending plate down while I'll be drilling the screws into the wood. These are all just going to bite and hold everything together and we have to do that at every point that these pieces line up. But yes, teamwork is a huge thing on this project. What you see here is what we improvised with. These we kind of used as washers, 
but this is for the screws to bite down onto the flat bar parts because the holes in the flat bars were a little too big. But you see right here, this is gonna hold the screw right in place. While Ralph and I are connecting all the wood on the ground together, we have Rudy right over here cutting up those makeshift washers just to make time go by quicker. Now that the floor is all set up, we can start building up the shed on top of it. The one we got is made out of a steel, but you can find a variety of different types such as plastic or wood. I'm not too sure how well plastic sheds would do with blocking sound from projecting out, but if you happen to know, go ahead and say so in the comment section. Also, be aware of what the weather will be like, because rain will definitely cause the wood flooring to warp. My brother Andrew actually came down to help us with the shed too, and this really made some time fly by. The more help you get, the better. I also want to leave a little note here. If you go to the time shown on the screen right here, you'll see that the shed is sitting on top of tarps. It would have been easier for us to do this before we built the shed up, but we made it happen. These tarps will actually protect the wood and keep it safe from weather damage, as long as the tarps are secured down well. These are the tarps. They are covering the whole underside of the shed, and they wrap around the wood to keep it protected from the elements. We used weather stripping tape and some Gorilla Tape that we had to secure the tarps to the sides of the shed. This ensures that there are no openings for anything to get into. So these flaps right here, just go ahead and set them down and you gotta get this kind of tape and we'll put it along all the edges. And of course the little holes, anything that you see to cover it up. What I'm gonna show you here is how much light is getting through the shed. These glowing areas are the most obvious indicators of openings that need to be sealed up. So, let's start with the doors. We bought about three packs of this EDPM rubber weather strip tape that we'll be placing along the openings of the doors. But before we do, we've got to wipe off the surfaces of any dust or water so that the tape will hold tight. Now that it's nice and clean, we can place the rubber tape where we need it. What we did was stagger the placement of tape between one door and the other at the spot where they would meet when the doors are closed. Kind of like how your fingers look when you're holding someone's hand. Imagine your left hand as one door and your right hand as the other. Keep your fingers pointing up in a high five position, but put each finger from one hand between each finger from the other hand. This is how the rubber tapes from each door would line up, staggered like that. You notice that stagger of the rubber tape between the doors here? That seals quite effectively, it works really well but also place some along the edge of the entrance and some on the perimeter of the doors where the edge of the entrance meets the doors when they are closed, as you see right here. This method works for sliding doors though. Other sheds may have hinged doors, but I'm not too sure if they would even need to be sealed. If they do, maybe this can give you some kind of idea of what to do. Let's see the results on our door with a light test. So we'll go ahead and close it up. Now, no more light. So that's a good sign, but now we have some other spaces to fill. This here is called Great Stuff, and it's the big gap filler version. Open the straw, shake it up for a minute, and make sure you're covered up and being safe. When using it, pull the trigger in quick single bursts because it puts out quite a bit. Do this where there are any large gaps that need to be filled. All that marshmallowy looking stuff is where we used great stuff. For us, it took the use of about two or three cans to finish it all up. We filled up corners, notches, and even spaces on the ceiling. The big gap filler worked very well, but won't be necessary for the smaller spaces. These smaller spaces required something that doesn't expand so much. So, we got acoustical sealant, three of them to be exact, 
but we also had to buy the caulking gun to use it. So cut the tip, poke a hole through the inner cover with something thin, and as always, keep it safe. Just like with the rubber tape, wipe off the surface before using the sealant. Also, have something you can use to cover the end of the sealant with when you stop using it. We use the sealant along the floors and various edges of the ceiling too. We also use some of it on the outside of the shed just for extra measure. Basically anywhere where there was a crack line, it was filled up with the sealant. People typically apply it along all the edges of a room. This is weather stripping tape that actually came with our shed, but we had to get more anyway. What we did here was measure out the length of the spaces between the reinforcement bars. For this particular shed, the walls were made of many smaller panels that were definitely secured to the structure, but not to each other. And so that left behind some small horizontal openings. This tape would allow us to close those up and keep them covered. Here we have a window bar, used for air conditioning units, that we cut down the size with the small saw we used earlier. We also cut some blocks from the leftover plywood with the bigger saw that would fit into the ends of the window bar. The wood functions as a solid gap filler that needs to be secured to the bar. We did this simply with some foil tape. We're now going to drill a small hole through the center of both wood blocks. These holes will later have a screw going through them, which will also go through the wall of the shed, but you'll see that in a few moments. We used a little bit of duct tape that we already had lying around just to temporarily hold the bar in place. We found this to be a nice spot for where we wanted our air conditioning unit to mount to. The air conditioner we found was a small one from OfferUp for just $20. If you do the same though, make sure it's in good shape. Now with that bar in place, we got the drill again and placed it through the holes of the wood blocks. Just to be sure we wouldn't damage our bar, we only used the drill to put markings on the wall to tell us where the holes needed to be. With the markings there, we can push the bar aside for now. While I drilled the hole through the wall, Ralph pressed on it from the other side so we wouldn't bend the wall or anything. Finally, we can mount the bar to the shed. We just gotta put a screw through the holes and then a nut on the screw from the outside. So we have the screws on both sides and we're going to place them through the holes. And then Ralph is going to be on the outside to tighten the nuts with a wrench. All I'm going to be doing is tightening the screws with a screwdriver from the inside. With the bar now secured, we need some ventilation holes. To do this, we picked up the drill again and put several holes through the wall. We kind of made it look like a cheese grater.
We also picked up some mesh screen, cut it to size, and tucked it into the bar. This will keep little things out like bugs and stuff. For us to secure it, all we did was get some more of that foil tape and stick it onto the screen and press it onto the wall. We're definitely going to need power, so we bought an extension cable and traced out a spot on the wall to put it through. Our cable was 25 feet long, but that's because how much distance we had from the nearest outlet, so your case may be different. So with the spot traced, we bore a hole and cut it up with scissors so that the outlet of the cable could barely get through. It's important to have it so that it'll be a tight fit. We'll go check it out from the inside of the shed. Here we press it into place and bend the metal shreds down in a way that it hugs the plug snugly. Now back outside, we used more great stuff to fill up the gaps. This is the regular version though, not the big gap version. We did only need one of these. With some more of the duct tape, we wrapped up the plug and the metal shreds to keep things covered and in place. After that, we reinforced the hold with more foil tape. Since we just opened and used the great stuff filler that short moment ago, we went back to finish off the AC bar right after we finished securing the power cable. Now we'll just use the great stuff along the perimeter of the bar so that the only air going through the AC is between the AC hose and the outside. Now ready to connect the AC hose to the bar as you will see right here. Here we are spraying some Rust-Oleum black undercoating on the ceiling. It says that it deadens sound, and I could say that it does a little bit, but if you want to make a bigger difference, you would have to make coats of it, and we didn't do that. But just remember to use something to cover your breathing passages. I just so happen to have a gas mask, so why not? Just be aware that it can get a little messy. Now we have some foam mats that we got at Harbor Freight. For the mats that will go along the edges, we want to cut off the connector bits to make a flat edge. You can do this easily with scissors, but just be as neat as possible. This right here is how it should look once it's all put together. Next we are using industrial strength velcro tape. Plot out good spaces to place the rough velcro tape as mounting points for some acoustic foams. The acoustic foams we got are massive panels and it's best to prop them up by setting a ladder on them to hold them in place while you work with them. While you have them held up, it'll help you map out where to put more velcro tape. Once you know where to mount the foams, draw on the foams with a marker where the rough Velcro touches them to indicate where to put the fuzzy Velcro tape. Then 
This is Gorilla Glue. We'll put a light layer of it on the spots we marked on the foam. The glue will expand slightly and harden within like 5 hours and it'll make a solid surface. Once these glue spots have hardened, stick on the fuzzy velcro tape. What I figured out later is that it might be a good idea to also staple them into the spots as well to make them hold perfectly. We just stapled them with a common office stapler and it worked very well. If you need to cut your foams like we did, that won't be a problem. We used fabric cutting scissors, but regular scissors may be just fine. We bought a 2 pack set of these lights off Amazon and they were a great deal for just 46 bucks. 50 watt white LED floodlights with a basic plug in cable and they don't get all hot. And it's even better that they have mounting holes. And of course, it's adjustable. To install them, we'll need a bolt, a washer, and a nut. The bolt will go through a top beam of the shed, the washer will hold the arm frame of the light, and the nut will tighten everything together. So first, the bolt coming from the top. Then we bring the light up. The washer slides right over the bolt. And the nut goes along with it. You can use wrenches or even ratchets to tighten the bolt and nut. We actually used twisty ties that come off of the bread packages to hold the cables along the upper beams and we got a 15 foot extension cable for each light and ran them along the edges of our shed to our power source. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for, especially us. A completed music studio in a shed. This whole thing is powered through the Belkin 12 outlet power strip. We got it off of Amazon and it works wonders. It's also a safe unit because it has a surge protector. That's going to mean that if there is a power surge, it will automatically turn itself off so that it won't burst into flames and cause a bunch of damage. This place is safe, comfortable, and overall better on your wallet. Everything is set up and ready for recording. And because we have all the acoustic phones up, the audio quality is going to be much more crisp and clear. So let the good times roll. Here I am using this app known as Sound Meter. You can find it on the Play Store, probably the App Store as well. But I'm trying to calibrate it here. I've calibrated as much as I possibly could to make it accurate, to record my voice from three feet away. As you see, that six option there at 60 decibels. Normal conversation roughly is that decibel level, and which is what I'm at right now. So I'm gonna record in here first to show you how loud it is, and then we're gonna take it outside and record it some more. No editing on the audio whatsoever. It's gonna be all just straightforward raw sound that you're gonna hear. And let's get to it.
that was the build. Thank you very much for watching, but please, if you have any different tips or suggestions on things we could have done differently, or if you had your own ideas, anything, go ahead and shoot it down in the comment section for other people to learn from. So this is going to wrap up the video. Please, if you did enjoy it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, share it with others, and if you haven't already, please subscribe so you get to see another jam sometime. But until then, keep it cool.